Figmas has released a wide range of new features at the config event, from variables to inline prototyping to font pickers and dev mode. But today I want to focus on responsive designs, focusing on auto layouts new features. Let's get started. Creating responsive interfaces means the design that you create should be able to adapt to various screen sizes. So the benefit of this is the ability to have one single solution that can dynamically adjust and resize its content. So in this example, we've got images and text there, as well as the layout of that. And depending on how you adjust the size of this frame, it'll adjust the content within it. So this can save time when designing a product that requires that cross-platform support, um, because it allows developers to have a clearer understanding of how the content within that should adjust to various screen sizes. So those would be desktop, mobile, and tablet as well. Here we'll have an example of some case study cards from Komodo's website. It's a fairly simplistic grid layout with images, tags and a title, as well as a description for each one. Now these are already set up in OO layout, but each row has an individual OO layout set up on it. So this has a vertical position with 24 pixels gap between each card. This is in an overall OO layout that has 64 pixels between that, so that's just in the height of those rows now. Now with Figma's new features, we no longer have to do this. We don't have to separate it all up into separate OO layouts. We can just have one overall OO layout that automatically condenses them down into new rows. So that's the ability to wrap elements within Figma. So it'll automatically create that new row if the, do if the cards don't fit within the edges of the screen. So let's see how we can set this up. So over here, I have an individual sort of card, which is the, uh, the main component for these cards and I'm just gonna create a new instance of this. Now, in total, we want um, three for each row. So I'm just going to create three here and just put them beside each other. And I'm gonna put these in an auto layout. So you can hit Shift A or you can add it in the right-hand column there. Now, these have 24 pixel space in between them. And because I want these to go on multiple rows, so I want some more cards here, I'm just gonna duplicate this a few more times. Now, if we had all these cards on desktop, it would be overflowing over the screen. So we want a maximum of three cards. Now, previously, I know that we want this frame set to a fixed width of 1,128 pixels because that's the maximum size that we want to use. And as you can see, this is the size for the cards that we've already set up. So these cards are already around about 360 pixels. Now, now we've set that sort of maximum width of the frame of 1128 simply go into the auto layout section here and select wrap now when you select that it'll automatically move all of the cards onto the row if they don't fit within this frame now what we're going to do is we're going to set minimum and maximum values for this so the maximum size that we want this overall frame to be is 1128 so all you do is go over to the right hand column here, hover over the width and this little arrow pops up of a drop down and all you select is add maximum width. Now, as I've mentioned before, we're gonna set this to 1,128 pixels. I'm also gonna set a minimum width here as well because we don't want it to be just like three pixels wide. So I'm gonna select the same option there again, but add minimum width. And this time I'm gonna add in 300 pixels and you can see an overall sort of example of this with these grid layouts here so it's showing you the minimum that it will be just as a visual reference so once this is done if you just select off that and when you adjust the size of this frame now all the content will automatically move to the next row if it doesn't fit within that frame now this is good it's we're one step there but all the content within this isn't dynamically adjusting depending on the size of this frame. All it's doing is moving that down to a new row. So that's the next part we're gonna set up. So now we've defined the minimum and maximum width for the overall frame. We're gonna do the same for this blog card component at the top of the page here. Now over here, we're just gonna go over to the right hand side, select this drop down, and add minimum width. For this case, I'm gonna set it at 300 pixels because this is the minimum width that was set for the overall frame. So we don't want the card to be able to go any smaller than that. Once you've done that, you'll see nothing's happened still. Now, if you adjust this, the same sort of thing has happened as before, where none of the cards are resizing. To make sure that these resize, all you need to do 
is set these individual cards to fill container. Now, you can't do that with the component itself because the only two options here are fixed width and hook contents. The reason for that is, is because that card is not sat inside of a frame or container, so it's got nothing to fill, where these individual cards do. So you'll see that option on those. All you need to do is select all of the cards within this frame, go to fixed and change this to fill container. Once you've done this and you start resizing your frame, you can see that all of these cards automatically adjust. When you start to resize it, you'll see these sort of red guidelines pop up. And what that means is, is it's reached its minimum width that it can possibly be, or maximum width if you go in the other way. Once you go lower than this, you can see it'll jump down to what the next available size is. And you can see how all the text is transforming within this as well. Now, if it happens that the text inside doesn't adjust or any of these tags don't, just go up to your component card at the top and make sure all of these are set to fill and the same for any outside sort of containers with these. If you've got a tagging system like what we do, it's the same process as before with the wrap. So if this was set just to vertical, you can see there's a bit of an overlap here. What we want is if it reaches the maximum size, go down to the next line and wrap. So that's just this option here. And again, make sure that's set to fill. Now you have that fully responsive grid layout. Having a fully responsive design in Figma is not only going to save a significant amount of design time, but it also improves that overall developer handover process. It means that developers will be able to go into the design and interact with it fully to understand how it should adapt to all of the screen sizes and not just desktop, tablet and mobile breakpoints. It'll help minimise any miscommunication and allow developers to suggest improvements or clarifications easily which overall leads to that faster implementation with fewer iterations without compromising on quality. If you found this useful and you have a digital product or service, get in touch and we'll discuss how to improve your overall UX and UI. Simply visit our website at komododigital.co.uk and we'll speak to you shortly.